desire to be But if you follow the river, the Milky Way down through the Zodiac, it comes to, it runs through near Sagittarius and Scorpio. And so the tarot preserves symbolism of that. The, the planet spheres uh, have a lot to do with that. And the little Pharaoh is in his boat. You see, you'll see this image of Ra in his boat or Horus. And that was an old symbol thing. He's, he's on the Royal Highway. The Milky Way is the Royal Road. and he will exit the, the universe he will exit the cosmos when he gets to the uh, galactic center another another motif is why you got sagittarius with a bow and arrow because the arrow points to the center of galactic galactic center which was called scutus you can look up on a star map right now and you'll see it says scutus scutus means target it actually means shield but it meant the target that the uh, that the centaur or the bow person you know, and then you get it in Robin Hood and you, you, you get the bow, bowman and hundreds of corporate uh, advertisements. This was an ancient motif and even a lance. Uh, you, you'd be amazed at the canning that goes on with this, you know, like you said, the punning. But the idea was that the enlightened one, uh, they have it in Mexico. Ixbala, Shibala, they call it. The same road, the same Milky Way and the same hero or warrior or king floating down it and then exiting out through the uh, you know galactic center and the bowman or the horseman you know it's anybody pointing that was the point always to galactic center and then when people pick this up and they got statues in their homes you know that might do that of course it's all misaligned a lot of these uh, illuminati houses and royal houses have this motif but often you know it's been moved or whatever uh you get uh, in greece you got this phenomenon of the herm H-E-R-M-E, -E, which were phallic-like busts that they put at specific areas on the land. Remember the field? He, he was speaking about the planetosphere, uh, the field uh, square. And that did indeed represent ratio, and it represented, as I told you, the inseminating of the earth. And often it was the goddess Priapus. There's two gods, well, there's Pan, Priapus, and Herm. And statues of these gods, similar to Janus, a bust, but often it would have a phallic aspect to it, were put strategically all through the land. And then later on in Europe, uh, it happened a lot, but it kind of happened in Greece. The Romans picked up on it. And that was just to do the same thing. Hey, we want fertility in our fields. Come on, goddess, but we'll put these phallic symbols around to symbolize that we're aware that the sunlight will have to come and inseminate the earth. And we'll be aware that the male seed inseminates the earth, you know, and this will encourage growth. It will encourage the fields to bloom and things like that. It's just, again, another way that the, uh, the ancients did it. But All right. Listen to Sound Right Reason. It is no coincidence that the word space has the letter pa in it and the word matter has the letters ma in it. Of course, pa stands for father and ma stands for mother. Brain loops omnibasal by way of vacuum gives matter the power to produce the mirror energy and principle called semen or sperm, the impregnating fluid of the male species. And this means that vacuum is the basic male principle according to marriage vows. The husband and wife are one and in this case, time is their keeper and the laws of nature are their marriage vows according to the laws of nature. Infinite vacuum, the husband, and infinite matter, the wife, have always been and will forever be in an eternal brace. Space holds matter, and they are embracing with eternal time as their eternal keeper in life. 
the smack circle of cosmos and in depth the smack circle of chaos by the laws of nature and brand new nobility begins with the royal couple and endlessness let it be remember always let it be known introduction to the nature nature book three pages 21 through 22 of the pdf Listen to reason. Organic sex intercourse does not happen in the top half of the smart circle of order. Therefore, Mother Earth, who is impregnated spiritually by nine ether energy from the sun in the form of ether lightning, gives birth to all physically living persons and things like people and vegetation. Mother Goddess Earth gives birth to persons and things directly from her person until she reaches her menopause at point nine north, C shape 28 ahead. In this topic and from this point persons and things including spirit gods and goddesses decline in standards and qualities to the fall in scientific death at point six west the hydropigment is formulated and gestated in the nine nature ether clay womb of mother earth sea womb and nine ether clay in shape 25 of on page 51 of this book and is born at and from the source of the Nile, the Nine River in Africa, as an ovaloid who gradually changes to a globaloid. See the shape 29 on page 67 of this book. By the time they reach point nine north in the cold with the form change and growth pattern, by the word ovaloid, the writer means shaped like an egg or football, and by the word globaloid, the writer means shaped like an orange or baseball. Let it be remembered always and well. Introduction to the Nature Nature Book 2, page 64 and 60. But uh, the center of the stellar world was this circumpolar zone, uh, you know, which becomes our Elysian fields and it becomes Hesperides. And the serpent was the protector serpent, Agathodaimon. You can look that up. Agathodaimon is, is their original name. And these first people were into it. That is why the Jewish calendar starts at midnight. They were a matriarchy, number one. Uh, descendants was always through the mother's line and their calendar began at midnight they were a lunar people Yahweh is a lunar God Based on you know other other deities from before, um, so and also because why why lunar? Well, who sees the stars at night? The navigators, these original Phoenicians, and the Phoenicians are the true. They call them Phoenician Canaanites, but they are the originators of the of the Jews. They're the same thing. They're just the pre. They're the you know the fathers, the antecedents of what we call the Hebrews. And not even that is a completely wrong word to use. That comes from a word called Ibaru, which meant saints, the high sages, the high astrologers. Uh, so prior to them, just like in the last program, we talked about the antecedents of the Greeks. So many of them. So the, so the Jews had their you know, uh, ancestors as well. They have many, many names. Ibaru would be one of them that we use as Hebrew. Uh, All right. Junior Cosmic Peace and War Times. Um, what I'm going to do here is read from the Bible Interpretation Booklet 1 written by Amanubi Rakhapatar, a.k.a. Afro-Oon, in 1967 and Booklet 2 in 1968. I'm going to lay down the premise here before we go into what uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Michael Tassarion was talking about, about um, what you heard him tell you that, that the Jews are descendants of the Phoenicians. All right, so what we're going to do is insert this information that after Uno went in with it, with more specifics and connect all that together. Then after that, I'm gonna lay a video down that me and Anu did a couple of years ago on Amadi's channel when he still had that channel dedicated as this, this about about four five years ago or so. Um, and then you then we'll wrap everything up. All right. All right. So hey, who were Adam and Eve by race and religion? Adam and Eve were him were Hindu East Indian in their religion 
was Hinduism. We must understand that name plurality is a key to understanding the Bible. Adam was not one man, but a branch of the Hindu people. The female of that branch is called Eve in the Bible. Adam and Eve were the first men and women of this world, meaning the first people of the moon cycle. That is, the first people converted to the moon god's way of, way of life. An ancient name of the moon and moon god is sin. The moon cycle, the sun cycle, began approximately 6,000 years ago. There were two, there, excuse me, there were millions of people of other races on planet Earth when Adam and Eve were ousted from the Garden of Eden, Africa and Asia, and sent to the Asian Islands. Who was the serpent and how did it beguile Eve? The serpent was Leviathan, a giant sex and spirit force who was able to control peoples and nations by sex and by spirit generated from blood and the waters of the earth. Leviathan, who has many spirit members and parts distributed throughout the earth, was cast from the sun approximately 17,250,000 years ago, just before the evolutionary cycle began. The moon cycle is the climax of the evolutionary cycle, the serpent. Leviathan is the moon god sin who hypnotized Eve and excited her womanhood by its forces and in turn, Eve excited Adam's manhood and they had sexual intercourse, which was forbidden by the laws of the sun god because Adam and Eve were priests and nuns. Before Adam and Eve defiled it, sex was sacred, meaning it was used only out of necessity, not out of lust. The serpent Lucifer brought lust into the picture and it does this through stimulating sex in various ways and this is why it is called a sex force as well as a spirit force. What were the results of breaking the commandments and laws of the sun god? Alright, so I'm going to just throw this in here real quick because I said this many other times. The laws of the sun god, which is um, Jupiter, aka Amun Re, Amun Ra, was also known as uh, Amanubi um, Re Harakti 6,000 years ago, also known as um, Menes and I think Neymar, which is the first, the, uh, the first ruler of the first dynasty out of the 46 that they talk about. And this sun and those laws that the sun god had when he was ruling the, the, uh, the priest and nun um, in Asia, he was known as Brahma. And the laws, um, Jupiter is known as Brahma, in Asia and King Amenubi or Menes or the first pharaoh of the first dynasty was known as Manu there. So if you want to know what those those laws were that the priests and nuns who were Hindu following, those laws of Manu were 6,000 years old. Alright? And I'm going I'm to just I'm going to link it and I'm going to put a picture of it in, in this particular um, video so you can see it so those who are interested in knowing what those laws were it's called the laws of Manu alright alright let's continue the priests and nuns called Adam and Eve were sent to the Asian islands between Asia and Europe where they started having children each group first born child was an albino and those albinos are called Cain in the bible and Cain is short for Caucasian Adam and Eve had more children. Those born after Cain were called Abel. Abel was black skinned, his and her parents, like his, his and her parents. But of course, East Indians have straight hair. The children called Cain grew up envying and hating the children called Abel. And as a result, a conflict developed between the two groups. And Cain, aided by the moon god, killed Abel. The older people left alive demanded that Cain be sent away from his and her evil doings. Then the moon god, which is Tahuti or Thoth or Hermes, right, the messenger of the gods, who beguiled Eve, appeared to the leader of the Cain group in a dream. Genesis, the fourth chapter, where is the land of Nod and what was the Cain? Mark that Cain, the moon god, which is Tahuti, set on Cain. The land of Nod is Europe. Cain went west of Eden, not east of Eden. There were darker peoples living in the land of Nod who would destroy Cain. Therefore, the moon god. The God who beguiled Eve set a mark on Cain, Genesis 4th chapter 15 verse, to save him or her, and that mark was the sign of his or her spiritual powers, the beginning of Christianity. The religion of the, of the Caucasian, Cain, was an offspring of the Hindu, and thereby got his and her spiritual powers from Hinduism. Hinduism is a pantheistic religion, meaning another form of pantheism. 
the Hindi, the Indians, both East and West, had the cross, the swastika, on and other forms in time immemorial. But the passing of the cross by the moon god from the Indian to the Caucasian constituted Christianity because this meant that the powers of the cross also had been passed from the Indians to the Caucasian. Therefore, the powers of the Indians gradually decreased and the powers of the Caucasian increased. Let me add right here. When it says that... um. The power, what they said, what they said, the, the spiritual powers from from the Hindus, Hinduism is a pantheic religion, meaning another form of pantheism. The Indians, both East and West, had the cross. When we're talking about the Indians, East and West. You're talking about what they're calling Indians or Native Americans in America, and you've seen what they did when they came here. The same way they they parents killed the original Black Able group right black skin and straight hair they came here and did the same thing and um for those who can do a little bit of googling you can see uh what you call them indians right because they are a branch of the hindu race that's why the native americans are called indians all right they are some jet black indians if you look for some old pictures not the, the these modern day indians who are brown and red and all of that the real black indians who are branch of the Hindus or the real Hindus overseas, them jet black soot looking in, in Indians. The same way you can find jet black soot looking African people, they came from them. And they came here, the Caucasian race, and murdered them. This is all you were seeing as a replay. So now you're starting to see why these things happen. All right? E, who was Cain's wife and did they ever return from the land of Nod? Cain was not one person, but a group of albinos who were the beginning of the Caucasian race. Therefore, Cain was males and females, and of course, the males took the females for mates. The first group of Cainites returned to the Asian Islands and from there to the Garden of Eden approximately 1,000 years after Adam and Eve had been ousted from that paradise. The time was around 3000 BC when King Cheops of Egypt who was ruling Western Asia and Northern Africa at that time lifted the immigration ban to which he had placed on Adam and Eve and their offspring to keep them from returning to the Garden of Eden in Asia. So we talk about Northern, we talk about the part by the Mediterranean. That means that was that was a, a immigration ban by the black African Pharaoh Khufu, but because he was possessed by the moon god and it was time for this, he made them drop the immigration ban. Much like you see Biden doing right now, just opening up the borders, and you can see the confusion that comes from that. All right, history is indeed repeating itself once again. All right, so we got that down. All right, when Cain reached the garden, he and she were not called Cain anymore. They were called Seth, same as Egyptian Seth, which means serpent. In the Bible, Seth is pictured as the third son of Adam and Eve, but the birth of Seth actually means a rebirth for Adam and Eve in the person of Cain back to the lands, Africa and Asia, of culture and riches. Notice in the Bible how similar some of the names of the descendants of Cain and Seth are. Genesis, the fourth and fifth chapter. It is no coincidence. So all this means that the Bible is the spiritual book of Cain and his God, who has many names and titles such as Sin, Seth, Thoth, Siva, Hermes, Leviathan, Poseidon. And so what this is, too, for those who are into the Hebrew persuasion or who want to enter that, a lot of those writings were produced by black Africans and dark-skinned, straight-haired Phoenicians. The Caucasian possessed those writings, and those writings did describe the Caucasian race coming and doing what they were doing. And so that's why he's saying this is their spiritual book. It doesn't matter if they didn't write it. The point is... The God, which is the Tehuti or Thoth, gave them the book because spiritually it was it was written about them in the positive, about their negative acts. But they took it and uh, they took it and 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 reworked it, reworded it and all of that. And it, but the spiritual powers work for them. You understand? It's like. It wasn't a, it was basically like every, they, they did all of the heavy lifting, but then the spirit forces took the book and then it became a power source for them. All right. Wow. So you can't use the Bible no more than you can use the Quran 
to try to convert or go against the Caucasian or the Arab because the powers that come from the book itself works in their favor. That's why they are at the head of those books. Doesn't matter who wrote them. It's the same way having a ghostwriter that comes out and say, yeah, I wrote Tupac's, how do you want it? Yeah, I wrote Beyonce's, this and that. It doesn't matter because all of the power and the credit went to the one that was singing it and the people whose name was put on the credits of the album. You equal saying where I'm coming from? So stop trying to use that as a talking point, my um my Hebrew kids. It has nothing to do with that. It doesn't. It, that's not the point. The book works in the favor of the ones who are using it. Remember, our people ghost wrote it, just to use a modern day term, and the credit went to them. But it still has truth and facts in it to a certain extent, which is what we're doing now. Adding that part in the in the, the missing pieces that y'all didn't know. All right, so. Let me see. Okay, did any Ethiopians that is so-called Negroes help write and make history in the Bible? Yes, but they were only being used by the moon god just as Negro religious leaders and their people are still being used today against themselves. One must go back beyond 3000 BC to find the true kingly and real queenly history of the Ethiopian, the people with woolly hair. The original kings of Egypt were Ethiopian black with woolly hair, but most latter their kings and kings and people of Egypt were Phoenician, a branch of the Hindu people. The foundation of Egyptian culture and knowledge were laid by woolly haired people in time immemorial before the Phoenician intrusion into Egypt. And then the Phoenicians start coming in right after the 6th dynasty in uh, Kemet. So from there, this is why, because most of our so-called teachers today don't know the difference between the, the, the jet black Phoenician uh, stock of people, right, versus the, the jet black kinky head people who were there uh, prior to the six dynasties, right, in time immemorial before pyramids. So that's why, you know, you that's why you have what Afro Asiatic, they talking about the language, because they came in and uh, we're going to get into all the other stuff later on. But that's the point that, that y'all need to understand. So whenever people start, yeah, you know, Egyptian was black, which ones? Because using black is not good enough because you have dark-skinned Phoenicians and dark-skinned Hindus and all that. That will be in scientific terms. That's just like saying, yeah, the, uh, the ancient Egyptians were melanated. But melanated is not just specific to the African race or the kinky, willy-haired people. It's other races who were darkly melanated. So you have to go into a extension of hair texture, not just lips and, and noses, because you got different people who are not African or African descent got big noses and big lips, and it's not of our race. So you can't you that's not good enough because you could make a statue just like right now if they was to find us later on pictures of say, uh, let's say. You see, yeah. like black women, a lot of black women are naturally got big breasts and big hips and thighs and all that. And so they made a bunch of statues, right? And and they look at all the women and they made, and only the statue and the hair was kind of stringy, like white women. And people will be like, man, you know, the people that lived in this area must have been the same people because they all got big hips and all that. But then we know that it's other races of women and I, that's not in our race, they got the same big thighs, big hips and all that. You can't tell off of that. That's not enough. You see what I'm saying? So you have to be more scientific with, uh, with that type of information. All right, so let's get to the video with me and the new going into this a little deeper. Two minutes to calm, peace and water. So I'm just trying to take this back. So I'm going to read this, the story over a little bit. All right. First of all, uh, the people that we're talking about, 118, 158, 118s. Let me go back so we can uh, equal stand what, what we're doing here.
Because we're talking about the Phoenician race, and now we're talking about the Mongolian race. What I'm going to start here, it said the Ethiopian race is all people who grow genuinely kinky hair on their heads by nature, any place on planet Earth or elsewhere. That means off the planet. The Phoenician race is all people who grow genuinely straight hair, indeed, on their heads by nature, like Arabs, Turks, Spaniards, Latinos, etc., etc., any place on or Earth or elsewhere, meaning off the planet. The Indian race is all people who grow genuinely straight hair on their heads by nature, like those of India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Nepal, etc., etc., any place in the world of existence. The Mongolian race, notice he didn't say on the planet or elsewhere. The Mongolian race is all people who grow on the, their heads, genuinely straight hair by nature, like Japanese, Chinese, Koreans, Vietnamese, etc., anywhere in the universe. All right? So now, we're going to go down a little bit because we focus on the Mongolians. So we're going to go down to page 128. All right. So what we're going to, 127, 128, okay, all right. Listen to reason. There existed groups of priests and nuns loyal to the commandments of the sun god who was later called Amun-Ra and represented by a hawk-headed or eagle-headed man instead of a lion-headed man or a man-headed -head lion whose human form was deadened according to the ancient history research. Therefore, Amun, Amun, whose main form was the human form and Dedan, the Nubian god, who was always represented by human form, was synonymous, that is, similar to the same. Adam of the Garden of Eden was not one man, but a group of Phoenician and East Indian priests. And Eve, therefore, thereof was not one woman, but a group of Phoenician and East Indian nuns, all sworn to cel celibacy, similar to Roman Catholic priests and nuns of today. The moon god Sin was jealous of the sun god Reharakti because Reharakti was getting most of the attention, honor, and pleasure required by the gods and goddesses for human beings. It is so that the Phoenician priests and nuns represented the sun god. The East Indian priests and nuns did represent earth god. And the Mongolian priests and nuns represented the moon god. And remember, it was time for the moon cycle, the last stage of evolution to begin. So what happened with Adam and Eve was just a part of the act in the program to get the moon cycle started on this negative way. Let it be remembered well. So let me stop right here real quick. Um, and let me know if you can see my screen change. Or do I need to do I need to screen share it again? Yeah, you got to screen share it again. All right, hold on. Let me know if you see, did you, uh, the screen change. All right. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Now for the watching audience, this book here is what you want to get. All right. It was written by L. A. Waddell, Phoenician origin of what the Britons, Scots, and anglo saxon All right. This Caucasian here did a, a great deal of work and citing a whole lot of sources that that took their whole they traced their whole bloodline back to the. Uh, the Phoenician race, which the Caucasian came out of the Asian islands from the Phoenician priests and nuns, which you're going to get to that. And uh, the, the place that Adam and Eve group, uh, who were East Indians, they were, uh, which a branch of the Phoenician race, they were in the Gulf of Aden. All right. Aden is what they call it today. You know, the A and E was interchangeable in uh, ancient times. So all you got to do, if you want to see the place that the Adam and Eve group were, not a white Caucasian male and a white Caucasian female, 
it's the Gulf of Aden. It's not in Africa. Okay, in this particular point, the Gulf of Aden, all you got to do is look it up. It's right there. You can see it. That's where they were 6,000 years ago. All right, so we're just laying down the the, uh, the premise of how this story is, is told in the introduction to the nature of nature. And it's going to basically, for those who who didn't understand what the Bible was trying to say, this is what it was actually took in place. And because of the Caucasian and, and, the, and the cycle and the moon cycle and the cycle of uh, forgiveness and mercy and lying and deception, their history was uh, scattered and covered up and only those like uh, certain elites of the Jews and certain elites of the, uh, the, the, the Catholics and things like that and these little different Masonic groups, they know the truth. But other Caucasian people knew something wasn't right and that's what set people on a mission to find out the origin of them like Hitler. People like that who actually wanted to find out the truth of where they came from because the information that they, that they, they was privy to was showing something else. So all you have to do is get this book here and it goes into the different things that he he, he studied and it, it basically tell, he traces the Caucasian race back to the Phoenician race. I just want y'all to understand that. So when you get a chance, this PDF, you can go online, get the Phoenician origin of Britons, Scots, and Anglo-Saxons. Okay, I did a video on it called uh, B-I-A-E, one through three, and it chrono chronicalizes a lot of the different things that's happening. So this is the actual uh, actual factual of, of how the Caucasian was able to, to trace this. This guy traced uh, their root race back to the Phoenicians or the, the branch of the Phoenicians or they call them the Aryans, which is the Hindus, some call the Dravidians, whatever. But that's who they come from. All right, is it showing the, uh, let me see, I'm looking now. All right, cool. All right. The East Indian priests and nuns did represent the Earth God, and the Mongolian priests and nuns represented the Moon God. And remember, it was to, it was time for the Moon Cycle, the last stage of evolution, to begin. So, what happened with Adam and Eve was just a part of the act and the program to get the Moon Cycle started on this negative way. Let it be remembered. Let it be known. Now, verse one seventy five, very important. Listen to reason. The Moon God sin, Mercury or Hermes. Who is the legendary messenger of the gods and interchangeable with the serpent god set as shown by his attributes the caduceus plotted with the earth god dagon known as uh dagon or poseidon or sobek and the underworld god pluto dis or osiris indeed to make caucasian man and y'all gotta understand that this is the part that a lot of um people who are teaching online or other places that say that our ancestors were scientists but when they tell the stories they don't tell you the scientific part they say yeah isis and osiris or such and such did this but you never see the true scientists and they have to match up with modern day time and they have to show you how it all came into be you can't say something like kanun created a man and a female on a potter's wheel that in itself is just as stupid as saying that a man was brought made out of some dirt and somebody breathed into it and it started breathing and living both of those are ignorant when people take these things literal that's not science that's storytelling so what we're doing is adding in historical and scientific data where you can actually go and do the research yourself all right the moon god sin, same as the god Mercury, symbolizing the Caduceus, represented by members of the Mongolian race, persuaded Eve, the nuns, to do or indeed use Spanish fly, cartridges, aphrodisiac, potent sex stimulus. Sin is the ancient name of the moon god connected to the Caucasian Jew by Sinai, meaning the mountain of the moon, and, co and connected to the members of the Mongolian race by Sino, meaning or pertaining to Mongolian by race. All right, Eve the nuns now have powerful sex urges all the time because of the potent sex stimulus persuaded Adam the priest to have sexual intercourse with them by giving the priest the same kind of sex stimulus in their food which the nuns were using in their diet and exposing their feminine curves. 
Adam did participate with Eve in the carnal knowledge of the tree of good and evil, which was forbidden by the, the uh, celibacy commandments of the sun god, Ray Harakti. Now, we're going to go back up a little bit. Let me add into this right here. Um, for those who keep, uh, the Nawapians who keep saying that Afro Uno would uh, learn from York, which is a lie, or that Afro Uno and Dr. York are the same, not true. They should, those who've been around no, long enough know that York did not teach this story. York taught that Adam was a Hindu and Eve was a, 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 a pygmy. Both incorrect information because they was not. They were Hindus. And then changed the story and said that Cain was black and his brother was, was dark. But when you get into the information of what uh, Newton and myself had laid down, we proved that the Caucasian indeed came from the Hindu, and it's a scientific thing that took place, which he was telling about the methanol groups. All of that stuff is what played into it. So for Nawapians that are listening, y'all been lied to once again. We're here to correct the information and support what the introduction to the nature of nature did say take place. All right, now, because the way Afro Uno wrote the book, he didn't, he left key words in it for those who knew how to look for certain things when the time was right and to bring forth that. So in this case, just like, again, the Wapians never was told that Mongolians was involved with the Adam and Eve story. They was told they was in a garden, some extraterrestrials had built a garden for them to keep them from being slaves like the rest of them, the Anunnaki, and they ate from the fruit from some uh, demon or devil or whatever they want to call it. That's what got them kicked out. So those of you been around, really pay attention to the facts that we're bringing in the store and the historical evidence and, and, and be honest with yourself. You know that York never talked this and he never produced no facts, just stories. So here we go. All right. So the first thing we need to do is uh, I looked up my, I looked up, I took the word Sino in Mongolian. All right. And what that did was that took me to this group of people here uh the, the the tibetan monks okay right here the mongolian race is all people who grow on their heads generally strain hair by nature like japanese chinese koreans vietnamese etc so that was the clue so when you start doing research it takes you right over there in china and mongo and uh and mongolia and also right in that same region is tibet So when we start doing research, we realize that also in the story was talking about sexual stimulants. So now we know that the Tibetan monks, when I did research on on Tibet and the in uh, sex, what came up was um. All right, it's this right here. Let me know when y'all can see that. You see that, Anouk? Yeah. 